Okay, in this video, we're going to talk about vacuum pull down. And it's one of the most hotly debated and discussed topics in the CNC router world. And for good reason, it's kind of the key to everything you're going to be doing. If your parts aren't holding down, you're not producing efficiently. So, there's lots of things that we want to check for. We check for gasket material, make sure there's no gasket material underneath your vacuum bed that's been flipped over, torn, or ripped. We check the vacuum connections themselves, both under the table and at the vacuum pump. Make sure those are all secured. Uh, you'd be surprised how much vacuum hold down you'll lose with a tiny little leak in one of your pipes. Maybe is isn't quite tight enough on one of the fittings. Um, one thing that's often overlooked though is the spoil board. Now the spoil board is what we have uh, right here. It's the piece of material that we're going to um, put on our tabletop that helps protect the table. Also is used as the medium through which we're holding our parts down. So the vacuum is sucking through this MDF and once we turn the vacuum pump on, it's going to hold these parts, letting us cut, engrave, machine, whatever we want on the table. Well, one thing I've never really been a huge fan of is the large diameter table milling tools or spoil board surfacing tools. In the past, I've always used something fairly small, uh, one and a quarter inch. You can find them from all the main major tooling manufacturers. They all sell a variety of sizes. Here's a, a one and a quarter inch. Um, as an idea. They use uh, carbide tipped blades, but they're throwaway. So once this gets dull, you just toss it. Now, the reason I like these is they're 40, 45 bucks. So when we're talking about overall costs, uh, fairly low, but over time you're buying multiples of these you know, over the years. So recently I've changed my opinion on spoil board cutters and mostly due to some of the effects that I'm starting to see on hold down. What I mean is, when I would use a tool like this, I'd get a flat surface, but it wouldn't be the smoothest surface. It's a little fuzzy, but it is generally flat and clean. I just recently used this tool up in the spindle. I'm gonna grab that for you now. This is a two and a half inch diameter spoil board surfacing tool from Amana. And it has two inserts, one here, one here. These are solid carbide. And as you can see, um, they're removable. So they've got an Allen key in there. And it's four sided, so obviously you can move that around and uh, basically get four uses out of uh, you know running these dull and rotating them, you can do that four to, uh, three times to get a total of four uses. So I really love this tool uh, because it's produced the smoothest finish that I've seen on a spoil board in a long time. So something really simple like that can really make a tremendous difference in vacuum hold down. So I'm definitely a believer in these. Now they are more expensive. This one retails for about 300 bucks. So we're talking almost 10 times the cost of this little guy here, but again, if you're uh, using this every day or every week, they're gonna wear out. Eventually, you're gonna cover the cost of this. And the replacement blades are pretty cheap. Uh, five or 10 bucks for a pack of those replacement blades. So, um, we're gonna take a look at the spoil board now. Now, just to show you, there's no uh, tape or glue or anything on the back side of this. Without the vacuum, these things move very, very freely on the table. and I'm going to uh, turn on the vacuum. Now you can see that material jump down and suck to the table. And with this one, I'm just gonna slide it onto the table. Now I'm pushing as hard as I can. My hand's gonna cut from the edge of that MDF before I'm able to move that. That's such a strong hold that I would have no problem uh, lining this part up in the corner of my of my sheet here and machining it, cutting it, um, engraving on it, and uh, not worrying about this major piece hold, uh, not holding. I mean, that's just intense. So again, I uh, give a lot of credit to the smooth result that this spoil board tool is giving me, which again, 
when I was a fan of the small ones because of the price, was giving me a fuzzier, not quite smooth finish. The, the, the MDF right now, I don't know if we can get a good visual on it, but that's like glass. That is just super smooth. And you can't see any ridges in it. It's a nice wide platform. And I, again, I believe it just results in a much uh, better finish. Now, there's also cutting techniques when it comes to vacuum hold down. All of the, these things here I've cut without the use of tape or glue or, or anything like that. Um, really small letters. And again, we can do another video on some of those techniques and the Enroute software, how we create an onion skin and come back and clean that up later to help hold that. But again, I think I'm gonna really enjoy this new tool and I'm gonna have uh, zero issues with vacuum hold down moving forward. Now, if we were gonna hold down something like this, which is a large block of material, I would gasket around this part and vacuum it directly to the vacuum table. It wouldn't require a spoil board or a special jig. That's gonna hold this part down tremendously well see here we're doing machining with no issues but what happens when you have a part something like this that's going to require a cut through in the middle we don't want to be cutting right on a finale table so in this case we put together a small custom MDF spoil board and we'll show you how that works so here you see the cut through and to protect our finale tabletop we've used MDF and also to get a, a better hold down, MDF wasn't quite working as well as I'd hoped, so we went ahead and drilled some holes around the edge. So you can see that right here. We cut this on our uh, saw stop table saw that we've got for demo right over there. Works really well. Call for a quilt. But uh, then we just drilled some holes. Again, you can do this on your CNC, or we have a drill press where you just you know, drew out a uh, rough sketch and then drilled those holes all the way through. Now we've got the gasket around that outside piece. And then those through holes give us the full vacuum, uh, you know, much a little bit of a stronger vacuum through that MDF. And it's all concentrated on that one part. And we get really, really good hold down with that technique. So to recap, in the past, I was a big fan of these one and a quarter inch bits. Again, mostly because of the price, about 40 bucks. And I would actually give these to customers as uh, a, a no charge gift when they'd order a machine. But now, I'm gonna start moving over to this tool. It's just really too many um, advantages. I used to say the only difference was this can cut your four by eight spoil board in about 10 to 12 minutes and this one cuts it in half. Well, that is a huge savings. We're, we're under five minutes now with the speed at which this one cuts and the amount of surface it covers. So that's a great savings to, to do your whole spoil board in under five minutes. But I think there's a lot bigger advantages now with the fact that we can get a much smoother finish, which is gonna result in more efficient cutting and better hold down on our parts. Nothing worse than having a part move on you and having to recut that part again. And uh, yeah, so it's a great tool, and I hope this tip helps.